Hello, my name is Dr. Tony Palermo, and I'm a chiropractor. I'd like to welcome you to the exciting world of chiropractic care. You're joining millions of people just like yourself who have decided to take an active role in their own health and well-being. Let's get started. Let me ask you a question. Why do you go to the doctor? Now, for the most part, you go to the doctor because you have uh, headache, neck pain, uh, perhaps a stomach disorder, you have a problem with the intestines, digestive problems. It all boils down to one simple word called symptoms. Now, the problem with symptoms is that uh, if you use those as your guide, it's kind of like you're thinking to yourself that uh, I must be healthy because I have no symptoms or I must be sick because I do have symptoms. There's a problem with that thinking. Let me, turn, let me, let me show you this. This is the story of Ivan Grinkoff. Ivan Grinkoff is a world-class skater, and you may be familiar with his story. Barbara Walters has interviewed his wife several times. Now, Ivan Grinkoff is a 28-year-old skater, and he, uh, he's a world-class skater. He's an Olympic athlete. Now, at 28 years old, he dies of a massive coronary. Now, when we think about the things that we're supposed to do to maintain our health, um, you've got to figure that Ivan was doing most of those things. Let's take, uh, let's take a minute to think about that. He was probably getting proper nutrition. Uh, he was probably getting adequate exercise. He probably got uh, adequate rest. He probably had a pretty good attitude, but something was missing from his health there. Let me ask you another question. When do you go to the doctor? Now, I know you're thinking to yourself, uh, it's the same thing as the first question, but it's not really. When you go to the doctor isn't the same as why do you go to the doctor? And the answer is, after you've tried pills and potions, stretching, bending, leaning, twisting, ice, heat, you've tried the, a plethora of things, you come to find out that the real reason that you go to the doctor or the time that you go to the doctor is when everything you've tried doesn't work anymore. Now, there's a problem with that as well because it turns out that we're spending an awful lot of time and an awful lot of money in trying to medicate ourselves or put our bodies to sleep and uh, try to make ourselves better that way. Unfortunately, we don't get better that way. The average day in America, we spend over $10 million a day on over-the-counter drugs in order to get ourselves healthy. On prescription drugs, we spend in excess of $45 million. That's crazy. You go one step further, we consume 80 million aspirin every day. These numbers are staggering, and we're not getting any healthier. We're actually getting sicker. Let me show you this. On an average day, when we consume these 80 million aspirins, what we're doing is we're taking in things like Tylenol. Now, they have their advantages, but the disadvantages are really great. Heavy or pro prolonged use of these pills and these potions actually cause liver, kidney, uh, stomach disorders. And this is according to the New England Journal of Medicine. Now, by heavy or prolonged use of aspirin, bear or bufferin, uh, you're talking somewhere in the area of 1,000 pills cumulative in a lifetime or a grand total of 365 pills per year. So if you're swilling pills and potions on a regular basis, like Advil, Aspirin, Nuprin, Aleve, Naproxen, if you're consuming these on a regular basis in mass quantities, what you're actually doing is you're causing yourself more harm than good. Now, although the evidence is in that these pills and these potions will actually cause more harm than good, you have to take a look at some of the contradictions that exist. Uh, one day I was reading the newspaper and I came across this article and said that uh, researchers find that you should take an aspirin every other day for the next 20 years and you'll cut your colon cancer risk in half. Now basically that boils down to 3,650 tablets over 20 years uh, and, and the benefit is going to be that you're going to have a clean colon. The problem is your kidney and your livers go. So it's your kidneys and your liver goes. Now that's sort of like saying there's good news and there's bad news. Uh, the good news is uh, you're, you're, you have the cleanest colon in, the, in a pine box. The bad news is your liver and kidney caused you to die. Let's take a look at the next slide. Since the 1970s, research has found that even things such, uh, such as antibiotics, which seem, oh, they're innocuous, they're not really a big deal. Uh, you know, doctors are saying we have a tradition of prescribing antibiotics to anyone who even looks sick. Now, there's a problem with that. There's overwhelming evidence that uh, in, in 1990s that there is far too much use of antibiotics and it's not going anywhere near the, uh, the, the, the microbes and the organisms that it was trying to heal. Now take a look at this one. Now this one kind of scares me because this is U U.S. News and World Report which accepts no advertisers. Now this is real important because they don't have anybody that they have to make happy. Now if you take a look at the headline in this one, 
This is front page information. Drug alert. What your doctor may not know about certain drugs uh, may harm or even kill you. Doesn't that scare you? I mean, isn't that why he gets to drive a Porsche and play golf every Wednesday? Don't you think that he should know that information? Uh, what we find is that the FDA actually has a hit list of certain uh, pills and certain potions that are actually causing more harm than good. So we've got to get off the idea of drugs and pills and potions as, as the idea of where we're going to find health, because health isn't found in the bottle of a at the bottom of a prescription bottle. So let me ask you a question. Let's go to this one. Where does health come from? Now, sure, it's real important that we have good water, that we have good food, and that we have good oxygen. You know, we know we shouldn't be lifting the toilet seat and drinking uh, toilet water. We know that we shouldn't be uh, eating, you know, Twinkies and swilling it down with old Milwaukee. And we certainly know we shouldn't sit in the garage with, uh, uh, with the car running and the garage door down. Because we know that it's important that we maintain our health by those three things. Now, here's another problem with that. And I've got to ask you a question. When I was back in chiropractic school, one of the things that we had to, uh, one of the courses that we had to take was called anatomy and physiology. Now, it wasn't just textbook information. We actually had to sit down in the cadaver lab and work on bodies so that we could find out where certain parts of the body were connected and how they were connected to different parts of the body. Now, I had a lab partner who was, incidentally, an absolutely beautiful girl. And uh, I was real fortunate. Now, one of the problems with this girl as my lab partner, however, was that uh, she had a raging problem with, uh, if she didn't eat at exactly the precise moment that her body told her to eat, she sort of turned into a screaming banshee. Now, we took uh, anatomy and physiology lab. Um, I went to chiropractic school in Atlanta. And I took this course during July. So it's the dead of the summer, in the sweltering heat of the south. The school was under major renovations uh, at the time, so the the cadaver lab was actually being held outside in a trailer. It was a metal trailer. Now, I want you to follow along with me here. We had a metal trailer in July, and if I didn't mention it, it was between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. that we actually took this course. So you can imagine how hot it was, how much it stunk, and, uh, and, and how difficult it was to stay in that room without the doors being wide open. Now, I go back to my lab partner. She would eat food. She would, uh, you know, kind of have some of the food would sort of drip in as she was doing, as I was doing the work the, on the cadaver, some of the food would actually drip in there. So we'd get some food in there. She'd take a sip of water and some of that would drop into the body. Uh, the doors were wide open and yet there was all this air coming in there, food being dropped off. There was oxygen, food, and water. And yet never once did one of these bodies sit up and ask my lab partner what she was having for lunch. Now, I'm being a little bit facetious and somewhat tongue-in-cheek, but there's a reason behind that. What separates a dead body from a living body? Now, I'm going to use an example here. Let me go to the example of, uh, of an acorn. Now, an acorn has the information, according to Ralph Waldo Emerson, the writer, he said that the acorn, within the acorn, blooms a forest of oak, which is a beautiful expression. Now, let me ask you something. Inside of an acorn, if you held one in your hand, do you think that the acorn has to go to the Growing Tree Academy to learn how to be a mighty oak tree? Does it have to go to uh, Oak University, you know, get the sweatshirt and have uh, Oak U on when it uh, graduates to become a mighty oak tree? Of course not. You see, inside, innately, the acorn has all of the information necessary to sustain life, uh, as long as there's no interference with the process, it will grow to be a strong and sturdy oak tree, providing oxygen and uh, beautifying the earth, as, as a matter of fact. Now, how does this tie into health and healing? Let me tell you something. Let me show you an article here. This is uh, one of my favorites, and I like the headline, because it starts off with, uh, can humor lighten up your life? Well, incidentally, I, I got to tell you, it's real important that you get, uh, as Norman Cousins found out back in 1983, it's real important that you get yourself four really good belly laughs every day, you and your family. Uh, I can give you some hints on how to do that. You know, if, if you don't know how to laugh, get yourself buck naked in front of a, in front of a full length mirror and do 20 or 25 jumping jacks. I promise you'll get a few laughs. Well, in 1983, author Norman Cousins had found that uh, by increasing laughter, you actually increase the stability and the strength of the immune system. Now, the thing that I found really amazing about this article was in the third paragraph where Norman Cousins found that research over the past 20 years tends to confirm the link between uh, health, mind, body, and disease. 
That's really important. Now, the key phrase here is that the scientists found that nerve cells seem to talk to the immune cells. So now what's going on there is basically, if your nerve system is in proper communication with your immune system, your body is actually getting stronger and healthier. Now, let me ask you something. You sitting there with your family, your husband, your wife, your kids, uh, people that you know, this is a really important point here. Isn't it important that your body has a strong fighting immune system? Don't you want to know that your nerve cells are talking to your immune cells on an ongoing basis? I mean, we hear about uh, rampant abuse of the body and immunodeficiencies and things like that. You need to understand from the body of that text and that article we just talked about that the immune cells talk to the nerve cells as there's a link between the mind, the body, and the disease. Now, let me show you the next slide. This is really important. Most people don't know that every function of the human body, and I mean every function of the human body, is under the control and the coordination of your central nerve system. Now that's from Gray's Anatomy, which is sort of like the, uh, the Big Bertha of uh, anatomy textbooks. It's real important that you understand. It didn't say some of the, the, the parts of the body. It didn't say uh, different parts of the body. It said all, every part of the body is under the control and the coordination of the central nerve system. Let me go back to another question. Let me ask you something. What does a doctor of chiropractic do? Now, that's a great question, especially for me, being a chiropractor. A doctor of chiropractic works with your body's inborn, innate intelligence. Now, remember we talked about the acorn a little bit, a little while ago? We talked about how the, the acorn innately knows um, how to become a, a mighty oak tree. It doesn't have to go to the Growing Tree Academy and go off to, uh, to Oak University. Innately, the acorn has, it, within that seed, all of the information it needs to thrive, survive, and be well and healthy. Well, the same thing with the human body. If the nerve system is in constant control and coordination of the entire body, which links the brain, the mind, and the body together, isn't it real important to make sure that that communication is always running constantly? Now, what a chiropractor does is he checks your spinal column to make sure that there's no, now don't let the word scare you, it's one of those fancy doctor words, to make sure that there's no subluxation in your spine. A subluxation simply interferes with your body's ability to, uh, to heal itself, meaning you're interfering with your, with your brain and body connection. So let's take a look at this slide right here. If you take a look, you'll see that the human body has this innate inborn intelligence, uh, which is really measured as a quantum of mental impulse. You may, may know someone who has had uh, an EMG or an EKG where they measure the electrical impulse from the brain to different parts of the body, whether it be the heart or to the muscles. Now, what a chiropractor's job is, is to do is to make sure that there's constant communication from brain down along the spinal cord and then out along the nerves to all the different parts of the body to maintain and restore good health. It's really very simple. Now, let me ask you another question, since we're on the question mode. Who do you think chiropractors can help? The answer there is really kind of simple, because you're thinking to yourself, well, as long as I'm alive, and as long as I have a spine, I guess a chiropractor can help me. And the answer really is that a chiropractor, well, a chiropractor can help everyone. And that's a real important concept to understand. It doesn't matter age, it doesn't matter whether a newborn or grandma or great-grandma or great-grandpa. Everyone can benefit from the use of chiropractic. Now the reason I say why everyone can benefit from the use of chiropractic care? Well, look at it this way. If a chiropractor checks your spine and finds out that there is interference, although you may not have any overt symptoms right now, wouldn't it be great to know that he found and prevented these symptoms from occurring? It'd be kind of neat, I would think. On the other side, Suppose the chiropractor checked your spine and she found that there was uh, actually no problems there and that the spine was well, healthy, good, good integrity, that the nerve system was functioning the way that it should. I think that'd be kind of great, don't you? It's sort of like, here's a great way to look at it. Do you wait until your teeth are rotten to go to the dentist? Do you wait until the cavity has gone full blown and you're in agony to finally go to the dentist? No. You go there and you know how many times a year? At least once and usually two times a year. You go to the dentist because you want to go for prevention, you want to go for maintenance of good, sound teeth, the same way you would go to the chiropractor to make sure that your health, your entire body is functioning the way that it should. Here's some shocking evidence. Let me show you this. According to the USA Today, one in three people are actually going to alternative caregivers such as chiropractors. 
Now that's really uh, some overwhelming information because a lot of people think that they're the only one that goes to a chiropractor. They're the only one on their block. Well, in 1990, according to David Eisenberg, who did a study for uh, Harvard Medical School, come to find out that U.S. patients made 425 million visits to alternative caregivers, and chiropractors are number one in the, in the field there, uh, versus 388 million visits to family doctors and internists. I think that's kind of some staggering information when you, when you think to yourself that uh, perhaps I shouldn't go see a chiropractor, maybe I'm the only one that does that. More and more people are turning to chiropractic care. And they're turning to chiropractic care for things that, well, most people wouldn't think of going to chiropractic for. Take a look at this article. I think you're going to find it fascinating. Fascinating from several aspects. Number one, uh, this article was not in a chiropractic journal. This is actually from the Journal of Behavioral Optometry. Now, this is the story of a 75-year-old man who presented with a self-diagnosis and an adequate self-diagnosis at that of blindness due to head trauma, meaning his eyesight was fine, he banged his head, and then all of a sudden his eyesight went away. Now, after all of the tests, the clinical impression from his ophthalmologist was that the vision loss was permanent and that there was no treatment indicated. Now, many of you know people uh, of whom has been said, uh, there's nothing that can be done for them, they're just going to have to live with it, and, uh, and I think that's probably one of the worst things that a doctor can do to a patient, which is to take away their hope. Well, eventually this patient was referred to a chiropractor, thank goodness, and after a series of chiropractic adjustments, now check this out, his vision returned. So those of you who have problems with eyesight, uh, vision disturbances, if you're having any kind of, uh, if you're having any kind of like blurriness and things like that, you might not think of trying the chiropractor, but it might be a way to go. Now this comes from Dr. Bordelon, who uh, I should preface by telling you is a medical doctor. And in this abstract, he goes on to describe um, the events that led up to the discovery of chiropractic care, I guess is the best way to put it, uh, by Dr. Daniel David Palmer in 1895. Now in 1895, Dr. Daniel David Palmer had found a misalignment of a vertebra, one of the bones in the back, of a Mr. Harvey Lillard. Now, Harvey Lillard had gone deaf 17 years prior to meeting uh, Dr. Palmer. And while it may seem, as, as, as I think uh, Dr. Bordelon presents very well, on the face of it, it seems like a totally fantastic claim that the chiropractic adjustment would actually restore Harvey's hearing. Well, lo and behold, it's the truth. And Dr. Bordelon goes into talking about how somatic dysfunction in the joints can actually cause an effect to the inner ear. Now, moms and dads, if you have kids with chronic ear infections, chronic ear disturbances, I urge you, I beg you, I implore you, please bring those children in and have their spines checked by a chiropractor. In that same vein, let's take a look at the next abstract. Now this one here comes from Ron Perot, who's uh, kind of, he's got a lot of credits to his name. Ron Perot is a PhD, he's not a chiropractor, and he did some research measuring the results of 107 patients uh, and their immune competence, meaning how strong is their immune system as a result of chiropractic care. Well. What I'm going to tell you may shock you at first, but if you get a good look at this article, you'll see that Perot's team found that the chiropractic patients had a 200% greater immune competence than the average person, which is the person that's not getting chiropractic care, and actually a 400% greater immune competence than people that were suffering with serious illnesses, such as cancer. Now, again, I ask you, if you want yourself, your family, your loved ones, to have a strong immune, cells, uh, immune system, don't you think it would be real important to make sure that your brain and your nerves are talking to those immune cells? Now this is the study brought to you by the Journal of the American Medical Association. Um, and in this study, back in 1958, the Journal of the American Medical Association had found that in measuring patients with ulcers, both duodenal and gastric ulcers, they found some phenomenal, phenomenal information. Remember I told you that the subluxation is when a vertebra loses its normal position with the, with the other vertebra and actually causes interference to the nerve system? That's called a subluxation. Well, what they found in this uh, research was that the areas of the mid-back, that's T6 through T9, there was overwhelming evidence that these people had gastric and duodenal ulcers, and as well what they had was a correlating or a corresponding area of their spine which was out of normal position. As a matter of fact, there were some scoliosis and curvatures that were so slight, they could hardly be differentiated from normal range. That's why the average medical doctor doesn't know to look for subluxations in the spine. 
Only a chiropractor is trained to not only detect, but to correct those, those vertebra. Do you remember a little earlier we talked about Ivan Grinkoff, the 28-year-old Olympic skater that had uh, died prematurely? He was 28 years old. Now here's a fellow who's doing all the right things. He's eating the right food. He's exercising. He's got a great attitude, getting plenty of rest. And I had said that there was one component that may be missing. Well, take a look at this. Here we have uh, information that talks about how if there's interference to the nerve system in the upper part of the back, that you can actually cause upsets and disruptions to the heart. Now let me ask you, a guy like Ivan Grinkoff, do you think that uh, he went right out on the ice and he was a great skater right away? You know the answer is no. You know that the truth of the matter is that this 28-year-old guy had taken on a lot of spills, a lot of falls, a lot of bumps, a lot of bruises in order to learn how to become a great skater. See, here's the way I want you to look at it, and it kind of takes some of the pressure off of you. You don't do something right the first time. Um, I learned that with my own daughter. She's, she's seven years old now. She didn't learn how to ride a bicycle. She learned how not to fall down. Same thing with a skater. He didn't learn how to skate. He learned how not to fall off of his skates. Now, what they come to find with this research is that in 85% of the cases, uh, there was atherosclerosis or hardening of the arteries when there was interference in the upper part of the back. Now, take a look at the next one. How about this? The lungs and the respiratory system. Now, if you have kids that are suffering with chronic upper respiratory infections, bronchitis, um, sinus problems, etc., it might be something to look worth looking into. Now, we talked earlier about the stomach and how there was an uh, overwhelming body of information that showed that if there's interference uh, to the areas of the mid-back where the nerves lead to the stomach, you're actually going to cause ulcers and ulcerative conditions. See, what we're getting at is the cause and the effect. See, the ulcer is the effect, but if you can get to the cause of the problem, the fundamental underlying cause of illness, sickness, um, uh, or lack of health, you'd want to do that. So my last question to you is this. Who do you know that may be suffering with a vertebral subluxation? See, the problem is you don't know. And the only way you will know is if you go to a chiropractor and have him do a complete chiropractic evaluation on the spinal column and, and see if there's any interference in there. To see if there's in fact any, any misalignment of the vertebra causing compression to the nerves and a decreased ability for your body to heal. Let's face it, you've got a great life ahead of you. You've got passion, you've got joy, you've got love, you've got kids that you want to see grow and flourish like the mighty oak trees. The only step getting in your way is up to you. Take the step, go to a chiropractor, check and see if in fact your health can be enhanced or your conditions can be relieved and resolved as a result of chiropractic care. Folks, it's been my pleasure to share some information about health and well-being with you today. My name is Dr. Tony Palermo and thank you very much.
expanding like the action series Lex, exclusively on space, the Imagination Station. Ah, yeah. ah. Oh, that's right, the key to remember. And Vietnam Film Week on History Television. I love the smell of night pump in the morning. Sarge, help me, I'm stuck. So stay tuned, there's more of what you want to see on MeTV. Rogers Community TV and Cashway can help you put in a new floor, install a new door, even figure out what this thing's for. All of this and more on the Home Projects Show, presented by Cashway Building Centers. The best of the Midwest are right here on Rogers. Top hockey stars from Cambridge, Kitchener, Waterloo, Guelph, Stratford, Elmira, and Brant County strut their stuff the Midwestern Junior B All-Star Classic. In this part of television land, nothing is too big or too small. And where you are matters more than where you're from. 30 years ago, Rogers created community television to cover the things that happen close to home, to cover the places where we meet and talk, places where anything can happen. Because in this part of television land, you don't have to be famous to be important.